What's going on everyone? My name is Suboptimal and I'm just a typical Indian guy who makes videos about web development and productivity. In this basics of Vue.js video, I'm going to show you guys how to debug a Vue app inside of Chrome. And to give you a little bit of a background, last week I started coding a simple little markdown app using a library known as CodeMirror. CodeMirror is just a text editor that is implemented in JavaScript that you can import into your projects and just display like this. And it's the library that a lot of different companies use. For example, JS Fiddle, which which is using three separate code mirrors, one for HTML, one for JS, one for CSS. You know, Golang, which is a programming language made by Google, is also using a code mirror editor. But you know, the point of this video isn't about code mirror, it's about how I was able to debug stuff inside of my view app as I was working with code mirror. And it's gonna be split up into three parts. First, we're going to just set up our view app and prepare it for debugging because before we can debug any app we have to do a little bit of configuration so that Vue can display these files inside of Chrome. Then we're going to look at how to actually debug, how to bring up this file, how to use the console, how to change the data inside of Vue. And finally we're going to look at a couple alternative approaches that exist if you don't want to debug your Vue app this exact way. And before we get started, I'm just gonna ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. I do spend quite a bit of time planning and editing these videos, so just a small like goes a long way in helping me and the channel out. Cool, with that out of the way, let's jump right in. I do want to mention that this project is built with the uh, Vue CLI and I just imported some uh, the code mirror library and I'm just displaying it inside of the app.view file. So it's just a single file view application. You're going to want to create a new file inside of your Vue project directory and that's going to be called the view.config.js file. And basically what we're saying here is that uh, we're telling webpack to display our source map inside of Chrome. All of our files inside of our view app are going to be displayed inside of Chrome so that we can easily traverse through them and uh, put breakpoints and things like that inside of Chrome in itself. So now that we set up our view config file, let's rerun our view app and I'm going to do that by running npm run serve. And what this is going to do is ensure that the view files are displayed inside of Chrome and that we can interact with them. So I'm inside of Chrome and I'm going to open up Chrome DevTools and here what I'm going to do is go to the sources section and inside of the sources section, right, I'm going to open the file that I want to debug. So in this case, uh, you can use command P like this, or you can you know, go in through the navigator and find the file yourself. I'm gonna use command P because I just really love using shortcuts. So let's just see how that works. So I'm gonna press command P and I can start looking for files that are available inside of my project. So for example, right, inside of this project, we got hello world, we got app, we got main.js. Well, technically I'm not using hello world. So let's look for app.view and let's look for main.js. Right, so I'm going to type main.js, and as you can see, you know, we can find the file, and this is the same file as what's inside of main.js. All right, so we have our main file. So let's just, you know, simply add a breakpoint here and refresh this page. What this should do is it should stop the app from loading because before we even load our app, we're just putting a breakpoint. So let's just ensure that works. Right, great. So we got our breakpoint, and it works. But usually, you know, this isn't the file that you really care to put a breakpoint in. What we want to put a breakpoint in is going to be in our app.view file. So let's find the app.view file. And as soon as I type app, you'll notice here uh, that, you know, this thing is displaying. Again, I'm pressing command P to open up this navigation bar and then I'm typing app and you get the app file right here. And so now we can finally do a little bit of interesting debugging. So now you, you guys see that we've set up our view project with the view config.js file 
and configured these options so that we can see the source code inside of Chrome. Now we've opened up Chrome and we've learned how to open a specific file from our project. But now let me show you guys a real world example of a cool debugging sequence just so you guys can see what is exactly possible and maybe implement it into your own app if you're ever you know stuck debugging something right. I have this toggle method and all it's doing is it's toggling the code mirror mode from JavaScript to uh, GitHub flavored markdown. So let me just press this real quick, show you guys what it's doing. You know, right now it's in GitHub flavored markdown. So if I press this, now it's going to be in JavaScript. If I press it again, you know, you guys get the idea of what this code, code what this code is doing. But the real key feature is when you can start adding breakpoints. So right now we added a breakpoint. And we've added this breakpoint uh, right before we get the mode of the code mirror. And so when I toggle this, right, it should pause right before it sort of uh, enters this function. So let me toggle it and show you guys what's going on. And now the interesting thing is you can add a breakpoint for almost every single one of these options. And as you are uh, going next, next, next inside of uh, here inside of your debugger, you can see what values are set. Right now, code mirror mode is set to undefined. But if we press play, it's going to stop at the next debugger point, right? And at that point, we would expect code mirror mode to be uh, GFM, which stands for GitHub Flavor Markdown. So let's confirm that that's what's happening. So if I hover over this, you can get the same thing. And if I hover over this, you'll get the same thing here. So now if I play uh, again, right, if I play this again, it's going to go to the next breakpoint. And in this case, it's uh, it's not going to break, it's not going to go here because right now this mode is set to GFM, so it's going to go here and it's going to break. Right now we're still in GFM mode, but after this command runs, we should see that this code is going to turn into JavaScript uh, syntax highlighted code. So let me run it. Cool. And now it has a little bit of JavaScript highlighting. And that is one really awesome feature of debugging uh, with source maps inside of view is that when you configure view like this, you can pause exactly where you are and you can see every single step of the way what is going on inside of the code. You can hover over specific aspects of the code and there's a lot of usefulness that comes with this. But let me show you guys an even cooler feature than this. Let me start with this breakpoint here and let me press the toggle button right now. We are right before code mirror mode is set. And so technically this should be set to JavaScript, but before this command runs, I'm gonna come over to the console here. To open the console, you can press escape, right? You can press escape to open the console. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the mode of this before it gets set. So right now it's not set. Let me change the mode. I'm gonna say this.cm, which is the code mirror, and I'm gonna set the option to mode. So once I run this command, you're going to notice here that this is going to be uh, turned into all white so that it won't have JavaScript syntax highlighting anymore. And you know, it's not going to be in JavaScript mode anymore. So I ran it and yeah, there you go. This has been changed. It had been changed live as the code is running. That is huge. You can do so many things with, you know, you can see all the variables here that are inside of your current context. You can do a lot of things inside of the console. You're just gonna have to play around with it. It's impossible to go over all examples, but you know, this example I'm hoping is getting the idea across to you of what you can actually do, right? So I changed the mode to mark GitHub Flavor Markdown. So now this should actually be GitHub Flavored Markdown. As you can see, like when I hover over it, it's changed to GitHub Flavored Markdown. And now again, it'll go inside of this if statement or this else statement because again, it's not in JavaScript mode and it's gonna be set to JavaScript mode. So if I play it again, right, it's gonna stop here, right? And then it's going to set it to JavaScript mode. And so that is the real power of using a debugger, right? You can not only pause things as they're happening live, but you can change the state of your program live. And that is the real power of using this sort of debugging method um, inside of you. And that's what I really wanted to come across with you guys. 
And so the last thing to talk about in this video are some alternatives that you could do, right? Like I showed you guys one alternative, which is setting up this view config file, which will allow Webpack to display your code inside of Chrome. And then you can add breakpoints and change stuff around, change the state of the app around, things like that. But you could do two other things. Now, the first one is doing this basically the same thing inside of VS Code. So VS Code has a couple extensions, right? It has like a debugger extensions. It has a Chrome debugger extension that you could install into your VS Code app and sort of do the same thing that I'm doing right here. Uh, the reason I prefer not to use that is just because um, when you're working with Vue, which is a, it's like, a, you know, it's a client side UI sort of library, right? So. I like to see what's going on live on the left section over here as I'm adding the breakpoints and as I'm changing it. Inside of VS Code, I feel like it's a bit too clunky to see all these things as well as the code, as well as you know maybe the Chrome section inside of VS Code. I think it's a bit too much, so that's why I don't really use the VS Code debugger. And another thing is that Vue made a dev tools option. It has this sort of, uh, DevTools thing right over here. It's an extension that you can install. And what that extension does is it, it, it provides you with this like separate view tab inside when you open your like Chrome DevTools area. I think that this has a lot of potential if you are creating, working with a complex view app, one that is working with state that has a lot of mutations, then there's a lot of power to using this because from what I can tell, you know, you can like revert specific changes and things like that. So yeah, that's going to be it uh, for today. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about how to debug your view app inside of Chrome. And if you enjoyed the video, then just hit that like button and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.